Okay, working with this, with these head components, the angle of my lizard is a little bit different than the angle of my rhinoceros. So I'm using transform tools in a slightly different way, playing with their perspective to kind of widen them up, angle them back, find ways to get them to look like the same midpoint angle will work. Also playing with rotation. So I can try to make it more believable. All right. The computer cannot make up information. It can only modify the existing pixels. But if I now skew, you see how I can kind of pick up that mouth and move it into a place that matches where the jaw is for that rhinoceros. And so now if I move it underneath, this jaw underneath the rhinoceros, I can see where I need to seam it together. So I want it on top, but now I'm going to first move this eye out. And I don't remove it, I simply duplicate it onto its own layer and save it for later. And now I can erase. And that nostril isn't helpful, right? The eye isn't helpful. but that upper lip is helpful. And then going back to the rhinoceros part, the tip of the lip there isn't helpful. I'm gonna erase that away. And I can start piecing these together a little bit. What I want is for this joint to, f to meet up with the lower jaw. And I think I want to do that by changing the proportions of the rhinoceros somewhat, like so. Okay, so now I have an eyeless beast with a big gaping mouth and a very bumpy upper lip. I shouldn't be able to see into the bottom of the upper lip from this angle. So I'm going to erase that out and kind of cut it around. And I don't have any teeth yet, but teeth can always come later. Okay. Whoops. Make sure I erase from the right layers. Now it feels natural that an eye should go right here, but I'm not convinced yet. If I take my opacity down, I can see where that seam can go almost all the way through, but it's not quite able to go all the way through yet. So instead I will just erase with a low opacity and try to reveal it as much as I can. Today's goal is to just assemble the parts and stack them together. It's not so much about trying to blend them and transition them. That will be more the beginning of next class. Though it's so much fun to do, I just want to assemble the parts like a car right now. And this is the hood of the car. I just want to weld it together. I'll worry about like smoothing it out and attaching it to the rest of the car in a little bit.
I can also see the parts of the neck texture that is useful and the parts that are extraneous. I can cut out the jaw a little bit, get a sense of that silhouette shape. Okay, but that's not all of the the things I had in mind for the um, for the head. I also have that that weird kind of using the foot as teeth in mind. So let me show you how I might add that in. And this might help me with my jaw transition. So I'm going to move that up above. I'm going to cut it out. We'll try the quick selection tool here. Let's go in small sections. See, it jumps ahead a little bit, but then I can modify it with my lasso tool and cut it out. By the way, with these new versions of Photoshop, it used to be that the lasso tool drew from the tip of the lasso. Now it draws from the tip of the arrow. So that was a slight adjustment for, for me and for people that are used to uh, older versions. I think it's maybe a slight improvement. Once you're used to it, it's not hard to adjust. Remember, option cuts away from your selection. Shift adds to it. And it really doesn't matter if you're using your eraser tool or if you're using your selection tool and hitting delete. You just want to really refine it. Sometimes you just got to zoom in. Oops. All right, to use this as a lower jaw, I'm going to select the inverse, duplicate it turn it off behind. You can see because I used that quick selection tool it left this really annoying little artifact. That's another reason why it's not always my favorite tool but with 100% opacity eraser I can get rid of that very quickly. And I can see I have little artifacts from my other layers that I need to get rid of. But we're not quite to the detailed <coughs> zooming in phase yet. So the goal is to just get rid of anything that's not immediately useful and then put the rest of it together. Okay, I want these teeth to be brutal and sharp. So I'm going to cut right into them. rid of all this debris. Be a little bit more accurate, I can take my brush size down, soften it just a little bit back from 100% hardness. And I like how, because there are claws instead of bone, or in, uh, sorry, instead of teeth, they kind of look like bone. They look very uh, rocky. So I think it will give my character a distinct look. People often think of uh, character design, especially head design, as being based on the eyes. And I agree with the placement of the eyes being incredibly important to recognizing a character, having a distinct design. Then they say the ears are very important and distinctive. 
and I agree, the placement of the ears, the shape of the ears, that definitely helps the silhouette. But what people almost never mention are the teeth. And if you've ever seen an actor that just has a, a really crazy makeup job where they just disappear into another role, it's usually just because of fake teeth. It just changes our whole perception of the proportions of the face enough. So I very seldom just take a jaw with the given teeth when I'm doing monster design. Whether I want that monster to look scary and intimidating or whether I want it to look dopey, teeth can play a, a big part of that. And they're not that hard to composite in. You just have to build the structure of the jaw first. Now all this erasing and selecting can slow your computer down a little bit. It's a processing heavy task to be modifying all of these pixels on the fly. So check that you don't have anything open that you don't need open if it's running slow for you. And some of us might need to restart our computer every once in a while. Okay, so now I've got that, that edge all cleaned up. So now I'm going to transform it, rotate it in, whoops, rotate it in. And I like how that kind of is hooking around, but I'm going to need to play with distort a little bit, turn this around, get it into the jaw. You see how I'm recreating that jaw line. And this is far more possible with organic shapes like this. You can combine transformations. Now I'm using warp. I'm just going to curve around this bottom a little bit. And now I'm going to finish cutting it out. And that lighting also helps a lot to make this jaw feel very distinct and bold. Right, the problem is the teeth are coming from somewhere weird, right? So they're not on both sides. So maybe I turn this into, I use this as the jaw, but I take this section here, I duplicate it, I flip it, I transform it, let's see, don't need to flip it actually, just need to rotate it and distort it. bend it a little bit differently. Maybe flip it the other way. Nope. <laughs> what am I doing? Flipping horizontal. Nope. Too much. So I'm going to bring that jaw around to this side so it has teeth on all sides. And now, because I copy and paste it from myself, I have to make sure that it looks distinct enough. And warp can often help with that. Because they're further away, I want to make them smaller. I want to move them behind the others. See that? 